Good afternoon, everyone. We are the Group 7C, and we will be discussing a clinical case caused by a pathogen under Enterobacteria CA, specifically the Salmonella enterica serovar typhi. But first of all, we'll, we will be tackling first what is Salmonella enterica. So a brief background about the Salmonella enterica. So it is a subspecies Enterica cerevar typhi is a, a human-specific bacterium that causes a systemic infection known as typhoid fever. So humans acquire salmonella typhi through ingestion of contaminated food or water. So the common clinical manifestations of typhoid fever include head fever, headache, and gastrointestinal symptoms such as abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation, vomiting, and loss of appetite. So the salmonella enterica is a red-shaped bacteria, and it is a faculty, facultative bacteria, which means that it can, it can survive with, with or without oxygen. Next. Case presentation. So our case is about ovarian abscess caused by Salmonella typhi, where a 14-year-old Aitoke or indigenous Fijian girl presented to a hospital with a one-month history of abdominal pain. Two days prior to that admission, her abdominal pain became worse, especially when she does any movement, and it was only relieved by lying down. She also developed a high-grade fever and nausea and had one episode of vomiting. She gave no history of cough, diarrhea, vomiting, or dysuria. And she also stated her last menstrual period, but denied any history of sexual intercourse. She was referred to a nearby hospital where ultrasonography is available, and the results showed a cystic structure measuring 4.9 cm by 4.4 cm at the right adnexal region. Minimal free fluid was also seen in the pouch of the blast, but there was no obvious appendix abnormality and other structures, including the uterus, were also normal. She was then transferred to one of the main hospitals in Fiji for further investigation and management. So the patient's past medical history was also unremarkable because wala siyang record of previous admission and she, she also had not been receiving any medic medications and had no known allergies. Next. So for the physical examination, yung pagpasok ng patient daw kay very, ano na daw siya, very unwell na daw ang an, uh, appearance niya. Then the pulse of the patient or, or the 14-year-old girl was 116 beats per minute. But the normal range for the children is 70 to 100 beats. Then for the blood pressure, 114 over 60 millimeter of mercury. Then ang normal is dapat 120 over 80. Then the respiratory rate of the patient was 21 per minute. Then ang normal dapat is 12 to 16 per minute. Then ang tem temperature ng patient is 38.8 degrees Celsius. Then the normal temperature, temperature rate should be 36.1 degrees Celsius to 37.2 degrees Celsius. Then the result of the chest and the cardiovascular examinations were normal. Abdominal examination revealed generalized tenderness on light palpation. And the result of the perrectal examination was normal. So ito yung laboratory findings ng patient. Ang upon admission, the hemoglobin of the patient was 9.8, which means very low ang kanyang hemoglobin. So, there are possibilities na malid siya sa anemia and sometimes makakosya ng fatigue or parang difficulty in breathing. Then the next day, 8.3, then 11.1. And the WBC count was 14,100. 
which is not normal, very ano siya, high. Siya. So it means that there are infections or reaction to drug or disease of bone, bone marrow. Then the next day, naging 10,950, naging normal na siya, then 10,060. And the platelet count was 313,000. And 289 the next day, then naging 329. Then yung normal dapat is 140,000 to 450,000. Then the urea is 3.0. Then naging 3.2, then 2.6. Ang kreya naman is 56. Then next day, naging 34, then naging 35. And total bilirubin is 22. Tapos naging 8, tapos naging 7. Ang alanine po... Alkaline phosphatase is naging 315 to 196, then naging 189. Ang aspartate amino transferase, 41, then the next day naging 18, then naging 19. Ang sodium to chloride, normal ang lahat ang findings niya. Next slide. Okay, so the culture shows that there is growth of salmonella typhi. So what happened prior to the culture was that exploratory laparotomy was was performed on the patient and the laparotomy um, revealed cirrhosal appendicitis with erythema and abundant fibrinose peritoneal fluid. So an, an appendicectomy was performed on the patient. So so upon the uh, no, upon the procedure, it showed that the right ovary was enlarged and had rupture because of pus um, accumulation. So the right ovary was incised and the pus was drained. So this pus was cultured and yielded a pure growth of Salmonella typhi. So yun na siya ang culture. So it was identified by using mic microbac 12A or 12B identification kits. agar so the antimicrobial sensitivity test was performed during a disc using a disc diffusion method on Miller Hinton agar so the organism was susceptible, susceptible to all tested antibiotics such as ampicillin chloramphenicol tritomethoprim sulfamethoxazole gentamicin cephalosin cefriaxone ciprofloxacin and nalidisic acid So treatment and follow-up. So the patient was treated with intravenous ceftriaxone one gram twice daily, cloxaxilin one gram four times daily, and metronidazole 500 milligrams three times daily for five days. So after that, she made an uneventful recovery and was dischar discharged to home on the sixth post-operative day to complete a further eight days of oral cotrimoxazole. So patient was reviewed one week after her discharge from the hospital. She did not have any complaint, and her surgical wound was clean, and there were no remarkable physical findings. The result of her stool culture after completion of treatment was negative for salmonella. So in this report, we described a case of right ovarian abscess caused by salmonella type B. So the patient has no history of sexual intercourse. So this tubo ovarian abscess is... um. One of the late severe complications of pelvic inflammatory disease, and it can also occur without the previous of EID or sexual activity, local spread from an infect or infected organ. So, as seen in our patient, the clinical features of ovarian abscess complicated by Salmonella typhi are non specific, and it can mimic an acute abdomen presentation such as appendicitis or PID, and then sudden onset of severe. Severe pain with fever and vomiting after four week history of abdominal pain signifies complicated disease. So, for example, um, perforated viscous or absent formation. And then, so the diagnosis of ovarian abscess involves thorough history of taking and physical examination to rule out the various differential diagnoses. So, the laboratory investigations are also useful in the diagnosis. Um, also, um, one specific um, process of identifying is, is the leukocytosis. And in only one systemic 
systematic view review, half of the patients with salmonella genital infection, including ovaries, had an elevated white blood cell count. So the pelvic ultrasound, it is an important tool for detecting um, enlargement of ovaries and underlying anatomical abnormality or risk, risk factor for abscess formation. And the laparoscopic evaluation of the pelvic organs is considered the gold standard for diagnosing tubo ovarian abscess. And definitive diagnosis should be made by isolating the salmonotype from purulent exudates. So the treatment of ovarian abscess caused by salmonotype includes antibiotics as well as surgical drainage, gaya ng ginawa sa girl, which um, her ovary, right ovarian was incised and the password was uh, drained out of it. And the choice of antibiotics is generally guided by the susceptibility pattern of the local isolate of salmonella typhi. So the duration of treatment depends on the type of organ involved and the extent of complications. Next. Okay. So to conclude our report, ovarian abscess caused by Salmonella typhi was the first case to occur in Fiji. And this just proves that extra intestinal infections caused by Salmonella typhi are rare, but it can cause severe and life-threatening diseases. Again, we are the Group 7C. I am Rosal Amante. And I am Rochi S. Bugador. Janika Jagdars Katan. And I'm Maria Nicole Zarandin. Thank you for listening. Amen. Amen.